Hey, what's up everyone? So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about these Canon DSLRs and if they're still relevant for filmmakers in 2022. Now, obviously you can make great stuff with essentially any camera that you have. And that's no exception with these cheaper Canon Rebel cameras. The camera that I have right here is the Canon T7, not to be confused with the Canon T7i. This is the slightly cheaper version and this is geared for more photography enthusiasts, but it can still shoot video as well. And essentially most of these newer Canon Rebel cameras have essentially the same APS-C side sensor in them. This Canon T7 is really basic. There's no mic jack, but you can control the video manually, which is great. Back when I first started my filmmaking journey, I had a camera pretty similar to this. It was the Canon T2i, and that was what really got a lot of us filmmakers started in our filmmaking careers, is using a camera that looked a lot like this. And this is kind of like a newer version of a Canon T2i. So there's a lot of Canon Rebel cameras that you can actually hack with Magic Lantern. I didn't do it with this one. I didn't even check if you can hack it because I'm just borrowing this camera. But I did do a couple of things to help me with shooting video on this, and I installed the EOS HD C-Log profile on this camera. Now, a lot of people use the CineStyle profile, which I also did as well, and it's a great profile to help expand the dynamic range of your Canon camera, but you have to remember that with cameras like this, they're just an 8-bit 1080p image. You can't really do that much with them. But with that being said, I was actually really surprised with what I could do shooting fake C-Log on this little Canon T7. <music> something just really nostalgic about using a Canon Rebel camera like this. Just from using it, I haven't used one of these in years, and as soon as I picked it up, I knew exactly how to control everything again. All of the buttons were in the same place, and it was just super easy to use. And I can definitely see why these are still recommended to people, because they're just very, very user-friendly. And even the image, there's just something about older, low-res footage from these you know, 1080p Canon Rebel cameras that just looked so nostalgic to me. And I was, again, really surprised with how far I could actually push the colors with the fake C-Log profile that I have installed on this. Since I wanted the most control that I could possibly have when it comes to color grading this, I actually color graded a bunch of this footage in DaVinci Resolved and then saved it as a LUT so I could just use it a lot more easier inside of Adobe Premiere. So something else that I did with this Canon T7 was even though I was using these cheaper lenses, I have an 18 to 55 kit lens, the 70 to 300 kit lens, and a Young Yuo 35 millimeter F2, was I put step up rings on them so they all would fit a 77 millimeter filter thread. And then I used a Nissi 1 8 black mist filter on all of these lenses just to help give it a little bit better of a highlight roll off. And then I used a Nissi variable ND filter just to make sure that my exposure was correct. Coming from using a camera like the EM1 Mark II to using a very cheap Canon Rebel camera like this, there are a lot of things that I missed when shooting with this camera. The biggest one would be IBIS. Since I shoot handheld so much these days, having a camera that has really good in-body image stabilization was something that I got really used to. And so it was kind of hard in keeping a stable shot with this little Canon T7. So that brings me to the main question that I posed in the beginning of this video, which is, are these still relevant for filmmakers or content creators in 2022? Now, although I've seen a lot of really good stuff created with cameras like the T7i and even 80D and 90 
90D. I feel like in 2022, it's really hard not to recommend a camera like the Canon M50 over this because it's a mirrorless camera. It does have image stabilization, even though it's digital. You can still put CineStyle and the you know fake C-Log onto an M50 as well. And that camera also opens up a plethora of different lens options that you can have. You can do native EFM lenses, or you can get a speed booster and get EF lenses and get like a, you know, fake full frame look out of it. So it's really hard to recommend these. I think that for photography enthusiasts who are just trying to learn and they wanted to get their first DSLR, yeah, I could see this maybe being a little bit better than an M50, but it's just really hard to recommend something like this, especially for filmmakers. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this really quick video. I had a lot of fun getting nostalgic with this old style of filmmaking, which is using a DSLR. This seems just so dated in 2022, but it was super fun to use, and I was actually really impressed with the footage that I got out of this little camera. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, it'd be really cool if you hit the like button, and if you want to see some more of my videos, you can click on either side of my face. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll catch you all next time. Later. Later.